I'm Kate Richberg, Director of Education here at Beeducation.com, and today I'm going to show you how to use the Power Punch Plier. The Power Punch Plier comes with two sets of directions. Now, I know it's tough to stop and read the directions over before you actually start to use a new tool, but I really recommend with this tool that you do. You can see on the front page of these directions, it talks a little bit about the features of the tool and about what it does, but it also has this handy hole punching guide so you can actually see what sizes the holes are going to be once you've punched out your metal. That'll really give you a good visual to see um, what size hole you want on your finished piece. It also has um, step by step. I'm going to go over this today in this video that I'm sharing with you, but it also goes over step by step what each of the parts are and how they work. When you receive your power punch, it's going to come in this handy dandy carrying case. Make sure that all of the parts stay in their little homes because they really are created to hold each of the little dies and each of the little punches so they don't get lost. You also have a key here that um, opens up um, the various screws and things on your punch. And of course it has a nice space for your punch to sit in. So try and keep all of these parts together so you're not searching for a punch when you're wanting to make a hole. The way this power punch works is the actual pun punching mechanism has two parts to it. There's a die in the bottom and then a punch in the top. And the size of the die and the size of the punch need to be the same. And in the little carrying case, they're marked with the same um, measurement, so it'll be really easy for you to match those up. But it's very important that the die and the punch match, or else your hole is not going to punch correctly. To change the die, and the punch out of the power punch plier. It's pretty simple if you just follow these simple instructions. What we're going to do first is we're going to take the die out of the bottom of the punch. So I'm going to turn it over here. It might be a little difficult for you to see, but there's a little space there in the die that allows you to insert um, this little handle and you're going to loosen it right up until, I loosen it just until I can grab it with my fingers, and then I can screw the rest of the die all the way out of the punch. I'm going to take it out, and I'm going to put it back in the little case here, right where it goes. Next, I'm going to take the punch out, and I do that by undoing the screw here at the side, again using my little screwdriver handle. I'm going to take that all the way out so I can pivot this handle up and out of the way and see how that just fell right out there? I'm just going to pull that out. Let's replace that with a punch that's just slightly smaller. I'm going to use the 3 16 size, and I don't know if you can see that there, but it's marked on the side of the punch um, with the size. That's a 3 16 inch. So I'm just going to come in here with my punch. I'm going to slide it in, and then I slide the pivoting handle right back out and I need to line it up, I need to push it down just a little bit further and can you see how it just drops right into position. Then I'm going to line up the holes here in the handle and that needs to be held in place by this little screw. I'm just going to tighten it with my fingers to start. First you have to line up the holes to make sure it goes through. I'm just going to screw it in here by hand and then to really tighten it down I'm going to finish it off by using this little tightening key. And tighten it down.
because you don't want that to go anywhere. Now we've replaced the punch up at the top. Now we need to use the corresponding die. Again, a 3 16th, and it's marked here on the edge. The bottom of the die is where the marking, the measurement marking is, as well as where the little notch is for um, the little screwdriver key. So this is the top part, the part that looks like it wants to meet up with um, the punch. So I simply screw it right into the bottom here. The bottom part of this hole punch plier is threaded so that just screws right in. And you want to screw it up so that it sits just slightly over the top can you see there's a little lip of that pointing out, coming out there. Um, there isn't any of the threading of the screw, um, and I stop when I start to see the threads um, of, the, um, of the punch, or of the die rather, start to come through. So now I'm all set up and ready to punch. This section here, this is the throat plate, so if you are punching something that isn't really deep, you might want to put the throat plate all the way to the all the way forward so you have so there's a good barrier there for the piece to come up against or if you're punching something that's rather long you can move the throat plate back and then tighten it down but again that gives you um, a place for your metal to rest against as you're punching. Now I'm going to go ahead and punch through this disc. This power punch plier um, is able to punch through up to 16 gauge metal, but the punches are of varying sizes. We have very small ones up to quite large circles that it punches out. So the larger circles, it's easier to punch through thinner gauge metal. So let's say 20 or 18 gauge, those larger punches, it takes a little more strength or a little more power behind the plier to actually get the punch through the metal, but it will go through for sure. The smaller um, punches are a lot easier to get through your metal. So this blank metal blank that I have here is going to be really simple to pop through. This is a 24 gauge metal, but even if this were 20 or 22, it would sail through pretty easily. So all I'm going to do is, and, and if you were doing this in real life and I wasn't doing this on a video to demonstrate to you, I of course would probably mark where I wanted my hole, um, all of those things. But this, I really just want to show you how to use the plier. So we're not going to do any of those formalities with marking the blank. I'm just going to go ahead and open up my punch and place my blank right inside. Now I'm going to get it up really close so you can see there's a little point on the very end of the punch here and that's what starts to force through your metal. So that's the little part that's going to be just lining up. That'll show you the very middle of your hole. Now I'm going to turn it this way and you want to be careful not to hold it like up here because you're going to smack your fingers together and it's not going to be very comfortable. You want to hold it here on the plastic handles um, so you don't hurt yourself. So I'm going to come in and I'm just going to punch it right through and you can see that went through pretty easily. And I have my little piece of metal here that came out of my blank. And I also have my cut piece of metal. Now this power punch, the really cool thing about this is it, well, besides that it makes a cool large hole, which I think is really awesome. But if you turn it over to the back and I feel that, um, that little rim of the punched out metal, it's pretty smooth. Um, you hardly have to do any finishing to this at all. So it gives you a super nice, clean hole. So I urge you, if you don't have a power punch, you get one right away because it's going to be a terrific tool for you to use. Good luck.